Matt Lenehan for Boxing Social and Association with Forged Irish Stout, Empire Fight Store, FreeBets.com. Here, Showtime, Sonny Edwards. How are we doing? All good? You've got more sponsors than me. We have, haven't we? And one of them is the same? Empire. Ah. You want the other two as well? Nah. Nah. Do you know what I think it is? I don't think I'm... Um, do you know when companies, they sit down and they have their board meetings about who they should get behind, yeah? Unless it's usually someone that, I don't know, maybe comes from a previous and now they're like, oh, I like that cheeky little fucker, let me give him some money. See you later. Like, I don't really get the corporate, you know what I mean? But at the same time, would I want it? Because when I have had so much expectations, oh, uh, um, could you just, could we have a, could you just, uh, You'd have to be careful on your Twitter, wouldn't you? <laughs> Nah, because no one could ever make me be Twitter. Like, no one could ever make me be careful. Like, yeah. no one's ever tried policing me. <laughs> no one's ever really tried policing me, ever. My coaches, my manager, because I'll do what I want to do. Even Eddie said, I'm not going to tell Sonny to say anything on Twitter. He'll say what he wants. You know what I mean? Oh, and he's know. right. <laughs> well, you're, you're a man, you do what you need to do. Look, um, start top of the card, we'll work his way down and we'll talk. Dalton Smith said it in a few interviews. Is this the perfect fight to find out? how ready he is for world level. Because when you look at Zapeda and the people he shared the ring with, Regis Progre, Hitchens, I know people always talk about risk, but at some point you've got to jump. This is that fight. Um, is this the perfect look, fight? Being at world level to fight Flanagan, what, 10 years ago? So he's been around, you know what I mean? He's very experienced, in good shape, hits hard, can box, southpaw, very, very hard. I think there's more to be gained in Dalton's head than outside of it from this fight. His heart and his head going forward. He wins this, does good, comes for a few uh, box ticked exercises. Um, his, uh, his mindset in a ring and his ability and his performance will, will really push on. I think it's one of those fights that he's going to have to see sometimes. I think he's going to have to see some hard times. I don't, I don't think uh, it's going to be a walk in the park, a one sided fight. I think it's a very hard fight. Uh, a genuine, genuine step up. Um, and to show to himself and to other people how close he is to world level. If he comes through flying colours, you could probably start pushing for him right to world level now. Where, who, who's the big guys there? You know what I mean? That's the ideal thing though, isn't it? And you'll know, obviously, being at that level, the fact that he may have to go to deep waters this fight, but that'll stand him in good stead when he has to make the jump up to world level, won't it? Yeah, I mean, if he was to be a world champion in the next 12, 18 months, you'd think you're beating as a painter because other people have beaten him. And he's been very, very close, but who knows? This journey of Zapeda might be his best yet. No, yeah. You do not know it. So it's so lazy to be like, oh, we well, lost his last fight. And, uh, like, no. Because all stars make fights. I was there at the Hitchens fight, yeah? And from the third or fourth round, I looked to my right and went, there's no way he's going to let him get anywhere near him. Yeah. And I, remember I, got pulled, I got pulled away from the fight interviews. I was doing media stuff. Yeah. So I got pulled away from the fight about rounds four or five. And I was not surprised that it didn't get stopped. There weren't no someone got dropped or nothing because Hitchens was in control of the movement but had to be because the moment he let him slip it would have been it could have changed very quick Dalton's is a, style is a bit different but Dalton can also be patient controlling the range but when Dalton lets his hands go he lets him go with intent and Zapeda will meet him with intent where Hitchens was meeting Zapeda with skill and, and you know ring prowess he was stepping in touching and adjusting, targeting and adjusting and keeping in control of everything that was going on yeah. bit by bit, punch by punch where Dalton will probably wait, time is it ready to come in <laughs> big punch like he always does because that's how we fight so at that instance I think it's a completely dangerous uh, a completely different fight um, for, for Dalton than it was for Hitchens and a much more dangerous fight stylistically however, like I said, if he's going to be the world champion which he could definitely be because you know, he shows it in the gym all the time, all the time, all the time um, if he's as good as we think he is he comes through this and we don't even mention European champions or backward steps we talk about world and you know half a million millions not 200s 300s 400s you know what I mean he comes flying through this we're looking at the world level you're looking at the Haney's you're looking at the best in the division not people now I'm and in about vacating titles because the fight might be a bit too hard at this stage of the career and they're only 21 you know what I mean no we won't be thinking about them people that's why for me I would have probably liked to see this fight maybe one or two down the line because I would have liked the European storyline yeah, but there's no point talking about it he, the only way to talk about or reason to talk about that fight is if Dalton doesn't win this that's the only conversation that gone now for a, a very long time I know I, I believe I'm told with good authority um that they're vacating if 
Dalton comes through, this just still wants to be there. They're going to vacate because the purse bid was meant to be coming. I don't know if it's been knocked back to after this fight. I'm not sure on that instant, but uh, I've held it on very good authority that boxer uh, McGuigan's and Azim's will not be fighting Dalton Smith for that European and British title. They are vacating before they have to meet Dalton. That's what I've been told on good authority. Whether that happens or not. But like I said, if Dalton wins, keep his European title. Then like, you're way down there now. Like, way down there. Do you think they've missed a trick doing that and not jumping on this straight away? I do, because I think Adam and Dalton are good enough fighters where you fight him now, the winner pushes, then the loser comes back, and then you do it again and again. And it could be like, these two could be the Kelbrook and Khan were meant to be. These two could be how Kelbrook and Khan were supposed to be. These two can. But right now, it's, you know, whoever's looking after them, advising them, it's more on a... Don't go, I think there's certain people around him that want to fight for the money that he brings. I think Adam wants it. Maybe, probably, as a fighter he should, because he knows. And bear in mind, I like Adam. This is We're talking about boxing and business here, yeah, yeah. when I'm talking. I actually Two think Adam's things, yeah. a good fighter. I think they've got a good family. Like, I have no issue, none. Yeah. But we're talking about Dalton here and the fight, and he's the other guy in it. You push and rush to fight for the European, Dalton was meant to fight for that European. Because he had an injury, they made a big play to fight for that European and got it and beat the kid, yeah? Fair. Yeah. But now Dalton's a British champion and mandatory for the European title. Because he was meant to fight that kid, but he was injured so he couldn't, yeah? So now if you vacate that title that you just jumped in line and was like, oh look, I'm in front of Dalton, and then vacate against the British champion as the European champion, you've lost more than you've gained winning the European title. Yeah. You've lost in public perception and public image. And when people are mentioning Adam and Dalton, if they don't fight now, and whatever happens over here doesn't matter for Dalton, yeah. even if he loses, he'll still be mandatory. He'll be champion of Britain and mandatory for the European. Yeah. He's not fighting on from Europe. He's not fighting on from Britain. He's not defending those titles, not fighting for those titles. This is a world level fight. So he will still go back to his mandatory when he loses. Yeah? And if he wins, like I said, it probably, probably not even like, okay, it probably could still happen, but. <laughs> Dalton's beat as a paid off, they're definitely not going to fight him. They, they don't want to fight against the Dalton that, you know, beat Billy Allen, knocked out Maxwell, and, you know, kind of had a close fight, close ish fight against Casey Benjamin. They don't want to fight him. So are they going to want to fight the Dalton that, I don't know, potentially could knock out or beat clearly as a paid off and then fight him? No, they're going to vacate. Been told they're going to do it anyway, but they're waiting to see how this. But, like, like I said, if I was advised Dalton, which I don't, it's not, it's not my part of the conversation, you're asking me the questions, but if I was advising Dalton, it'd be to stay in that, put the relentless brakes on, and the only moment you stop thinking about the European title is when they vacated. Yeah. They don't even fight for it. Leave it vacant, don't even fight for it. That's what I would do. We'll go for the world. Let's come on to Ishmael Mill quick. We've got to mention, we've got to mention him. Um, Ishmael Davis, sorry. Terrific fight. Who's Ishmael Miller? He used to play football. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I've got Miller in my head. But... Wait, hold on. Ishmael Ishmael used to play for Man City West Brom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Fuck it. I don't know why. Ishmael Davis, anyway. Great fight. <laughs> Troy Williamson. What a random, random thing to say. <laughs> right. Great fight. I know we mentioned and I've seen, obviously, Bucky's have Ishmael favourite, but this is a big step up for him now. This is an opportunity with someone who's been at this level for a while, mixed it in with higher, people with higher experience. What are you expecting on Saturday, though? Well, first of all, on the odds, yeah, we took his fight for Ish the first time when then he fought Adjarko yeah. and then we got offered you and McKenzie. He would, we'd accepted. The only reason Matchroom started speaking to Ish is because we accepted a fight with Troy and then they didn't pull out. No, they didn't. Adjarko then accepted a fight that they weren't getting over the line and then it, oh, okay, now Ish is there and they got him on the show that he was going to fight Troy on. He was going to fight Troy on that show. Um, so now they've offered it him again. We took the fight, but we're taking it in a place of, you know, come from the small hall circuit, didn't have an amateur background to speak of. Um, seven, eight years ago was in prison. You know what I mean? He, he, he didn't have the same. Seven, eight years ago, me and GB, uh, me and Troy are traveling around the world on GB and getting paid by the government to do it. And now Ish is a whole different reality and has found his way. He was always ready to jump in and he'll have a fight of anyone because yep. he, he's not a person that really fears anyone. Um, so a big, big belief in him, a great opportunity for him to be mandatory for the British title. And one of the easiest fighters you'd ever have the pleasure of working with because he just wants to fight and wants to get involved. We took the fight expecting to be three, four to one underdog, not favourite. Not three to one on. <laughs> a 12 round fight against someone that's been British champion, fought in this title fight, that title fight, that title fight, against someone that's never been past eight rounds and has only fought journeyman apart from one kid that was an eight and no prospect yeah. who'd never done anything to speak about. So 
for me, it's a bit like, fucking hell, these lot must be really rating and, t- and taking notice of Ish for the bookies to put him above a Troy. Because, you know, everyone that watches proper British boxing has seen Troy five, six, seven, eight, talking about Cheeseman, talking about Kelly, we're talking about Scarf, we're talking about, like, we've seen him in the championship fight. So, I don't know, I, can't, I guess it kind of, you know, brought people that I test for Ish, but a bit disappointing on the bookies because we thought he was the underdog. You know what I mean? Yeah. We thought we was coming here with nothing to lose. Just shows the myth. Just obviously, I think quite a lot of him. Look, let's come on to you. Um, when can we expect any news? I know you must want to get back out there now. Yeah, we're having the conversations now. Um, obviously, certain things got leaked to, to the internet and yeah. talking about. Um, they are part of the conversations, but there is more part of the conversations. And uh, uh, I think this week, you know, everyone being in Sheffield, my hometown, um, you know, the promoters, uh, the management, um, the fighters. We can sit down, we can have a little conversation and hopefully get a little bit closer. Yeah. Hopefully get a little bit closer to, uh, yeah, what's next? Yeah. My ballpark, I want to know if in the next week, I'll be real, yeah. like this weekend I should, I, I, we should have some, because we are into the conversation, but it's just about making sure everything's right. Cause who's, the, who's the names you've been linked with fighting next? I would, uh, I'll be real, they want Curio. Yeah. They, re- they, they really want a Curio fight. Um, which is fine by me, yeah. but it's got to make sense. Obviously, I'm going out to light flyweight. I'm quite heavy right now, um, so it has to be all like yeah. done properly. Like I, you can't. Oh, let's talk about it for ages and then give me seven weeks or eight weeks notice. Like, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Making a weight I haven't made coming off the back of a lot, like and Christmas and etc. And I'm not asking for no six, eight rounder, easy, steady away. Give me some money. He's no. I want a proper fight. Curiel's a proper fight, and the idea is beat him and. Uh, go straight in for the world title against the winner of not Shinga versus uh, Araneta um, Nonito Donaire's misses fighter um, you wanted that didn't you saw that back and forth you don't Nonito wouldn't you for a little move that would have been that would have been that would have been a big thing for you wouldn't it? imagine I bring Nonito Donaire to Sheffield Arena yeah after I fight Bam all the big fights he's had like I fought a Filipino for a world title before defended it against oh, him yeah. my brother has uh, you know it would be it would be a massive fight and the purse would be massive as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> right, look, uh, last one for me, I want to get your opinion on this. Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, are you for it or against it? Against it because I feel like, you know, you give, like, what, a 29-year-old or whatever he is, five, six years of training in his physical peak, um, and then you chuck him in against a legend that was past it when he was still in the ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong though, he did look a bit lethal against Roy Jones, Mike. Yeah. Though. He did, didn't he? But Roy Jones as well is that neck, isn't it? No, I know, but he did look a bit dangerous. Oh, don't get me wrong, I want well, him setting well, about you, but you know well, what I'm saying. But I don't get me wrong, I quite like Jake Paul in the oh, like, I don't know him. I quite like what he does and I quite like how good he is and he's showing everyone else how to do it. You might have negative to react to it, but you're still reacting to yes. it. And that's what people miss out on. They miss out on that a negative reaction is just as much of a positive reaction. It doesn't matter. If anything, you do a big negative reaction over here, yeah. I guarantee you without me saying anything or without Jake saying anything, there'll be as much of a positive reaction defending it. And that's what happens. So there, there has to be the negative to be the positive. So I don't see it as potentially all a bad thing, but wheeling out a, a 50, 60 year old Mike Tyson. A concern. Unless it's like just done in, in an exhibition. You know, like when Mayweather had Logan Paul yes, and just touched him round through it. And if it's done in that way, that style, all for it, let them. But We're talking about proper fight. Well, Jake Paul's got a professional record, so is he trying to get Mike Tyson a professional boxing record to fight him and pull it on his record? We're talking about a proper fight. But then again, Mike Tyson's getting paid what, probably like 50 million, 30 million, 20 million, or something. So and then again, I'd probably let Jake Paul beat me for that much money. I would, I would agree with him what round he wants me to go down for that much money. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you, what you want me to do is you want me to stand back, you're going to nod and hit me body shot and I'm going to roll around. Yeah, okay, sweet. Watch my performance. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, uh, it's an interesting take. But look, Sonny, I appreciate your time as always. Thanks for catching up. Catch up maybe later on after the fight. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.